Welcome to August Lico Challenge. Today's problem is numbers with same consecutive differences. Return all integers of length n such that the absolute difference between every two consecutive digit is k. Note that every number in the answer must not have leading zeros except for the number 0 itself. So 0, 1 has one leading 0, so it's invalid, but 0 is valid. You may return the answer in any order. So if we're given length of 3 and differences of 7, you can see our answer will be this list of integers, 1, 8, 1. You can see that differences are going to be 7, 7, same thing here, so on and so forth. So the first approach might be to, uh, we could do it brute force and generate the range for the uh, length of n, all the numbers with length of n, and check with our logic to see if uh, every consecutive digit is has a difference of k. But that would be pretty expensive and, and inefficient. It'd probably be better to build up our numbers instead. So how can we do that? Uh, well, we could do something recursively. We could start with all the digits from 0 to 10 or 0 to 9, let's say, and then build up our uh, digits until the the length is going to be equal to 3. So we could do that recursively, or we could do it more of a breadth-first search way. So what I'm thinking here is start with a list of all the possible digits um, with a length of 1, because we know that n is going to be at least 1, and 0 is included. And what we'll do is first we'll do some sort of breadth-first search, and we'll check, hey, is the length of our uh, number that we built up equal to n. And if it is, then we'll append it to our output. Append to output. Otherwise, else we will um, calculate the next digit, which is going to be either minus k or plus k, and add that to our q. Um, and we'll do this by generating a list uh, instead of integers. Uh, and at the very end, we could just join those into and convert those back to an integer. Now, once we've finished that, then that should have generated all our possible outputs. So let's begin by first generating our initial queue. We'll start with creating a queue method. And we'll say for i in range of, um, I guess, 10, we'll add to our queue a list containing our integer, so that would be i. So now we'll have this thing in here as our initial queue. So what we want to do is say while we have a queue, uh, first we want to check if our list is the length of n, because if it is, then we should add it to our output, right? So if, well, let's first pop off our list, say left. If the length of this L is equal to N, then we want to append it to our output, right? We want to say, okay, append to our output. Uh, but first we'll have to convert this list into back into an integer because we want to return it back as an integer, right? So that's a little tricky. Um, what we'll have to do is say uh, for, say every digit in, in our L, we'll convert that to a string. And then we'll do a, uh, a, a join method. And we'll say, okay, join, oops, join this back, all our L's, and convert that back to an integer. And finally, we'll add that to our num right here. Otherwise, we know that we haven't gotten to that length yet. So what we'll do there is, um, first calculate what our next digit might be. So we could either subtract k or minus k, right? So let's see. Take our next digit is going to be equal to the last digit in our list. Let's say start with minus k. And if this next one is less than or equal to 0, or I should say greater or equal to 0, or less than 10, then we want to append it to our queue. So what we'll do is 
take our list and add this next one into our queue. And we'll do the same thing, but this time with adding k here. So now we're like generating our numbers. We're saying, okay, for one, if the answer, if the k was seven, we'll calculate uh, eight and we'll say, okay, we'll add that in there and put that in queue. We'll say one, calculate minus seven. Well, that's gonna be like negative six. So that doesn't count. Don't put that into the queue. All right, so once this is finished, we should have generated all our possible numbers and we can just return our output initialize our output here as a list and let's go ahead and pick out our comments now one thing to note here is what about zeros though what if k is zero and we can have zeros so we don't want to end up adding two of the same number do we um, so we could account for that two ways we could either make this convert this to a set and then convert it back into a list which is fine, uh, or we could add some sort of more logic in here to check to see if um, the number we're generating is zero, or I should say if k is equal to zero. So we could do that, but um, for now, let's just forget that. Let's say um, we'll just convert this to a set and output. So let's see if this works first for three and seven. see that up oh, um, the rule invalid oh, I thought I converted it back to a string oh okay that was my fault Little typo there yeah so you can see like I'm not doing this the best way because I'm converting this back and forth into a uh, string and integer uh, but for now just for explanations just go with it uh, we can see that 70 got added and the reason for that is actually because there's a leading zero here and it's kind of tricky to take care of that logic so just just to make it simple what we just said okay uh, just make sure that uh, the length of this num is equal to three one, or n one last time before we add it so we can do just do that to take care of these zeros and there's a little bit of lag yeah so it looks like it's working the order is different but the numbers seem to be the same let's check out what happens when we do like i don't know two zero let's say and so far it's okay looking like it's working it's got the same length and all the digits are in there. So this looks like it's working. Let's go ahead and submit that. Now, you can see it did get accepted, so that's great, but can we do better? Um, because our logic is so mm, messy that we kind of feel like there's gotta be something better than here. So instead of using a queue, uh, we can already see that we're building up our numbers and we have this logic here where we're trying to we know what the next number that we, next digit that we want to calculate is so couldn't we do this in like a nested for loop uh, since we know how many times we're going to have to do this we're going to be doing it n minus one times right so let, let's try that let's think about what we can do here let's get rid of all this and say we'll start with initializing a temp and say this will just be a list of range 10 and now for i in range of n minus one, we're going to um, do a couple nested loops to regenerate our temp list. And we can make this into a, a, a set instead. So what we'll do um, is, okay, we'll multiply our number that we're seeing by 10 and we will add why but now we have to calculate what these things are right so 4x in cur and 4y in we're gonna have a list of uh, x modular 10 which is going to give us the last digit plus k also x modular 10 uh, minus k but 
we also need to make sure that there is an X at all and our Y is within range. So that's just zero uh, Y, less than equal to Y and less than 10. So once this gets generated, this actually will have a set of all the numbers and we can just convert that back into a list. Let's see. Sorry, I don't know why Lee code is so laggy today. It shouldn't be this slow. Oh, cur is not defined. Whoops. Okay, I call that cur. I call that, I call that temp. Temp. There we go. Okay, so looks like it's working. Let's go ahead and submit this. And there we go, accepted. And you can see that um, it's quite fast in terms of the submissions. Yeah, so this is the best solution. Um, really, the logic of it is not very different from using the queue. But instead of building up those lists and reconverting them, uh, we're using a modular function to take care of that. And we're also, instead of having like an if statement to know when to stop, we already know the number of times we want to run this loop. We know it's going to be n minus one times. All right, so I think I'm going to end it here. Thanks for watching my channel. And remember, do not trust me. I know nothing.